<coughs> I attended the uh, latter part of the Kolel Shir this morning that took place here, and the uh, Magid Shir raised the point that has set me thinking that I want to share with you. The uh, Targum, Targum Yonason, in discussing the Pora Aduma, uh, says that uh, they shechted the Pora Aduma, the Lozer, the coin, and then he says they were uh, bodeket miutchev's trefers, meaning they uh, have somehow there are 18 trefers in a uh, bovine behema. Uh, we uh, concentrate only on two of them, really, the trephas that exist in the lung, which is a uh, very common trepha. There are punctures in the lung that give rise to lesions, and the lesions attach themselves to the wall of the cavity of the lung. So that's a trefa because it has it's covering a puncture, a hole in the lungs. And uh, we find that uh, exists in about uh, 30% of all of the animals. So that's called the miut hamotsui. It's a, min- a minority, but it's a minority that <clears throat> occurs frequently enough to require inspection. And then we also look for tumors in the uh, intestines. So, but there are 18 trephas covering the entire body of the animal. And uh, in the uh, field of kashrus, there are people who are called botkim. They're bodek the animal. After the animal is slaughtered, it's eviscerated, and then it's inspected. So it's inspected by hand, by sight, and uh, the questions of kashers are decided by the bodek. And that's, uh, in, uh, because of that, a shochet was always called a shub, shin vod bet, that stood for shochet u bodek. Uh, with poultry, it's much simpler. There's only one thing that they look for and tumors in the uh, intestines, and uh, uh, that's less than 5% of all poultry. We have another rule that rov behemus kshayrus. What if uh, the, uh, you, can, you cannot inspect? Uh, what if the lungs uh, were lost, or they're not identifiable to which animal they belong? Because uh, today you have industrialized slaughterhouses, and it's all on an assembly line. So it's possible that the lungs are misplaced. So there we rely on the rove. Rove behemus kshayros. The Torah tells us that most animals uh, don't have problems of trephas, and therefore we can rely on the rove. So the Targum says here by the Pura Aduma that Elozer HaKohen somehow was bodek, the uh, animal, the Pura, to make sure that she did not have any of the 18 trephas, because if she did, then you could not use it for a Corbin and you couldn't use it for the Pura Aduma. So all of them, before she ask, the Pura Aduma had to be burned whole. It was not eviscerated. It wasn't cut up into pieces. So if that's the case, so how does the Targum say that he was bodek all 18 trephas? How can you be bodek all 18 trephas when you can't open the animal and you can't view the organs themselves. So there are, uh, there's an, an answer that's given 
that this poor Aduma, the Dean of Bidika, and the poor Aduma was only on the first poor Aduma. The first poor Aduma lasted the entire time of the uh, first temple. The ashes of the poor Aduma throughout Bayes Risha. So that was the poor Aduma of Moshe and Elozer. That poor Aduma had the Anone Yaakovod, they say, the pillars of uh, cloud that accompanied the Jewish people, they served as a, a, an MRI. They served as an X-ray. And therefore, uh, this, that's why they keep on mentioning Elozer. Why don't they just say a Kohen? Elozer is going to is the Kohen now, but he's not going to be the Kohen forever. So they should say, uh, uh, like it says by uh, by Negoim, the Kohen, Voila Kohen, the Kohen will see. You should identify the Kohen generically, not personally. Why do they keep on saying Elozer here? Because to teach us that this Pora Duma that Elozer created in the before they uh, they came there to Israel had this wondrous quality that the Anone Akovod inspected it for Trefus and so to speak decided that it was kosher but from then on if they were going to make any other Pora Aduma they would have to rely on the Rov they would have to rely on the fact that Rov Behem was Kshayros because you couldn't do anything with the cow except burn it right away so that's the uh, point that's raised regarding the poor Aduma. So that set me to thinking, which I don't often do. What about in today's world, where we have all sorts of things that never existed before? Uh, theoretically, we can scan the cow, right? I don't know how you can fit it into the MRI machine, but that's uh, certainly not willingly. But uh, but uh, let's. But in theory, uh, we have the ability to scan all of the organs of the animal, and we have radiologists just as they're able to scan the human body, and God forbid to see if there's a problem there so they would be able to see whether or not there's a problem in the animal. Would that be good? In other words, can you rely on technology to decide matters of halacha? I remember the Shaila Rose, uh, there was a great rove that I knew, and he was an expert on uh, questions of nido. So he created a, uh, an apparatus that was able to test blood and the colors of blood. So that uh, today when uh, we look at a Shaila and Nida, so we want to see is the blood brown, is it red, is it uh, yellowish? Is it mucus? Is it blood? All of these things have to be decided by the POSIC. Or in our time, the POSECET. <laughs> but uh, what if we have uh, technology that does it? Can we rely on the technology? And I remember that uh, I had a long conversation with him. I was in his city. And uh, I asked him, uh, well, you know, uh, how foolproof is it? So he said it's much more foolproof than the human eye. How fo foolproof is the rabbi when he looks? He can also make a mistake. So he asked Rabbi Feinstein, whether or not he should use, he was going to use it himself in his community to decide these questions. And he did never got a clear answer. It's 
traditional answer was uh, it hasn't been done, right? Lo Kavo say no, not like our forefathers. It's not part of human decision. And it had to be human decision because then there was no technology. Or maybe we should say that because we have the technology today, uh, then uh, that's uh, sufficient. So uh, I'll give you a few practical examples. I don't know how it is here, but in the United States, uh, there are many communities that have an Eruv, an Eruv Echatzeris for Shabbos to allow people to carry. You have to check the Eruv every Friday before Shabbos. The Eruv has to enter into Shabbos Becheskas Kashrus, that it's a good Eruv. So in many communities, you hire people to drive around and look at the Eruv. But there are communities today that you don't have to drive around. They have a technical apparatus that will signal if the Erev is broken in any place. So can you, they rely on that? They don't rely on sending somebody around anymore because on their uh, security screen, so to speak, like you have on the borders, for instance, there are sensors that uh, are able to tell us whether or not the Erev is up or down. So do we rely on that? Or do we still have to send people out? I, there's a proposition uh, before the Rabbanut here, and it was a proposition even when I was with the OU, that if you can't send the Mashgia, let's say uh, they're... Uh, they're packing uh, sardines in Norway. Do you have to send somebody to the plant? Or can you rely on the cameras that are in the plant? The security cameras, the manufacturing, they all have cameras. They see everything that goes on. Can you rely on the camera? Or do you have to have a person? And so this opens the wider issue of how far technology impinges on halacha mm. and how it can be used. And uh, as technology continues to improve, the technology today is more than it was even five years ago. So then there'll be more areas where these questions will become real questions and we'll have to decide how far we want to go with them or not, and whether we really want to give the cow an MRI or not. So we, uh, right now it's not really cost effective, but there could be a time when it could be cost effective, and it could be a time when you have portable MRIs, and you just run the portable MRI over the cow, and then it tells you whether or not there's a Shiloh there or not. So that's one of the interesting things, uh, a byproduct of this uh, statement in the Targum Yonason regarding the first Pora Duma that he said they were Bodic all 18 trefers because they had a heavenly MRI, <laughs> whether or not that will apply to us in our time as well. I have a Hanania Menakashi, Omer Otsa, Kodesh Borg, who was Akim Sisi, so I have.